All right, so now how to choose the right forecasting model. I was mentioning the level of maturity, different methods. And at the end, you know what? It's very simple. You're going to start where you are today. So if you have no forecasting, you're going to start with naive. If you have a naive, you're going to start by improving your naive, then moving to statistical. If you're in statistical, you will improve your statistical and then move to demand modeling or add commercial external inputs, for example. And step by step, if you're already in machine learning, great. I'm very proud of you. But the most important is to forecast. It's like when you run, if you want to run a marathon or a sprint, I won't point stop watching or reading too many books. You have to start, you have to be in movement, you have to run, okay? So run very slow, then measure, analyze, and improve. Okay, I'm going to change my shoes. I'm going to do some cardio. I'm going to change the way I eat. And this is exactly the same for forecasting and for all, as well inventory management as well. You want to f you want to forecast, measure, analyze, improve, and you want to have this positive loop as much as you can. Now I'm going to go back to the baseline of statistical forecast, and I feel it's important uh, to give you an example and how to choose and how to improve your model. When you have a statistical forecast, you have three pillars. The first one is the level. How many per month, per week? What is, for example, I have this iPhone. Okay. In my store, for example, I'm going to sell 100, 100 products of this specific model per month. Okay. So my level is okay. My average is 100 per month. Then I have a trend. The trend is, oh, I'm growing. This model is growing by maybe 10 or 20% uh, versus last year. So I can increase my level. And then you have the seasonality. The seasonality is like the cycles that we repeat. We will have a specific episode on that. And this is also very interesting. You, you're going to sell, for example, oh, I'm selling three times more iPhone uh, the last quarter because it's Christmas coming than the first quarter because there is not much happening. At the end, I think these three pillars is very, very important to understand because this is the core of every forecast you have. And once you have it, you can create your, what we call the baseline forecast. Okay, so you have this plus this plus this, and you can see I have the waves, I have the trend, and I have my level as well. Okay, so very, very important. We're gonna give you an example in Excel after. But this is a very good start. Then you can what we call enrich the forecast with what we call um, forecast value added, added <laughs> in English. And for example, you can include commercial inputs. You say, okay, guys, uh, we have my I have my baseline forecast, but we're gonna do a minus thirty percent. Or we, you can also override in the future in the past to say, oh, I need to uh, you know like. Um, I want to change my, I have my baseline forecast, but I want to change the way it works. Or maybe in the past, I had too many orders which were not planned, so I can change that. So what we're going to do next is like, you're going to change this, you're going to override, and you will have your final forecast. And this final forecast, you see, we're going to, we're going to include a big peak here for the promotion. We're going to reduce here. And this is more like a professional and expert level because you need to have, first of all, make sure you have a great baseline. This is the 2080, 20% uh, of the action, 80% of the results. And then if you feel ready, you can enrich it, but focus first on the baseline. Okay, then you can also improve the forecast. You're going to track, you're going to review your forecast and say, okay, that was my uh, forecast and that was my reality. So I tend to have always the same gap. So it looks like that I need to change the level. And then you can understand why I was always overestimating my forecast. Or maybe it's because my level, I say it was 100 per, per month, but I had a lot of shortages. So maybe it was not 100 per month, it was 120. So I'm going to change my level. And then I'm going to keep my trend and seasonality. And I'm going to recreate my forecast. And I'm going to review my forecast again and improve it, improve it, improve it. So that's the game I've been playing for the last 15 years. And at the end, it's always the same. You start forecasting, you measure, you analyze, you improve. You forecast again, you measure, you analyze, you improve. Okay? So that's the game I want to share with you. Keep this in mind. And uh, there is no one magic formula that works for everyone. This is the way we, ha we have to do it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video about forecasting. If you want to go much deeper about uh, how to forecast and have better accuracy, I, I do have a new free masterclass called Generate More Accurate Forecasts. And during 60 minutes, I'm going to share with you 
uh, with my friend from Amazon, Mario, uh, an expert in machine learning and uh, forecasting. We're going to tell you how to become a forecasting expert, how to deal with demand uncertainty, who wants the forecast, what are the best forecasting models, the best tools uh, to forecast. Is it Python? Is it uh, ChatGPT Copilot? Uh, what is the best tools for that? And what is the future of uh, forecasting the next uh, 20 years because we have a lot of change happening with real examples from Amazon, Decathlon, uh, Tesla. And I'm going to give you a free Excel, a free forecast generator to generate forecast in less than five minutes during this masterclass. So if you are curious, you can check below this video. And for your information, we also provide other free masterclass about inventory management, one of my favorite topics as well, how to reduce stockouts and overstocks. How, what are the best KPIs and dashboards in supply chain to have better performance? How to automate your task on Excel? I'm going to give you example and free Excel with Power Query. How to implement an efficient and collaborative SNMP process? And what are the best strategies to become a supply chain expert and leader? So if you are curious, you can check below this video. Thank you for supporting us. Subscribe, like, and I see you very soon. Thank you.